yes, yeah, so, so Christelle, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm pretty excited yeah. to be here. All right. And uh, so I believe uh, I had so rudely interrupted. You were going to like voraciously disagree with everything Paige was saying. Is that correct? 100%. <laughs> you you guys are lucky that you have to remove the, the, the shoes and the socks, and then now you have bunk bed rugs. In Mexico, you go all the way with the shoes, like, and then you go shoes in the bed, and then you have run, like, um, some some people have like this, um, like runaway mat in the bed. So Ooh. when people go with the shoes on there, then it doesn't dirty the cover. It only takes the rug. But we use our shoes. My mom has tried has tried to get the Canadian way, but nope. They're still using shoes in the house. Shoes in the house. Americans do that too, right? I thought that was only their thing, to be honest. I'm a little bit shocked here. We're learning now, things. Now, you, you do say we're lucky in Canada that we're taking our shoes off before bed. And I want to dive into that a little bit. Like, are you saying that there is a reason in Mexico you're unable to take your shoes off before bed? Like, have they been, like, taped to your feet by someone or... Have you tried to unbuckle all the sandals thing just before bed when it's starting to rain and then you run, wanted to run into bed like and then all those straps like all around the like you know the ones that have like tiny little straps and then they have like a little buckle hole and then you have to untie them all. Yeah. Oh like little belt side. buckles on them? Yes. Ah. And, I yeah, mean I can... I can't relate to that exact experience, but I have desperately tried to remove a lot of like layers of shoelace from some heavy work boots <laughs> when I'm desperately trying to get like through my door and into the bathroom. But that's not a discussion that is becoming of a future city councillor. So I'm wondering if we should steer clear of that. Sure. Let's talk about more serious topic more than shoes and rugs. Well, I'm I'm definitely more interested to stay on the rugs at least for a, a few minutes minutes more. I'm very interested mm. in the the rug that's on the bed that you're talking about. What I'm envisioning is, you know, when you go to a like uh what's it called? The brick or bed bath no, bed bath and beyond doesn't have beds. Actually, yeah. I'm not sure. Maybe they do, but they have the show beds all lined up one after another and then you get to try them out and they have this plastic cover on the bottom part of the bed where your feet go because everybody has their shoes on in the store and i'm wondering if it's similar to that it is very similar to that very um, like plastic it is not plastic it's actually like um cloth material just it's just ah. like maybe this wide and then long that goes across the bed so then you just put it at the, at the bottom of the bed. So then also we have the siesta, right? So then you go after mm. around two to have like a, a little nap and you just don't take your shoes off. Right. Because you just after the siesta, you you hop right back on your feet and continue and whatever you were doing immediately before you had your siesta. Exactly. Right, that's naps. how I envision it. Yeah. Power nap. Yeah. So you're yeah. saying these are a cloth material like for example a rug yeah mm -hmm. like um like kind of uh, the rugs that we put in a hallway that they're long but like not too wide kind of that but in a bed <laughs> I don't know how to explain <laughs> it that sounds like a bed rug to me as 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 uh close to uh what we're trying to steer clear of which is bed bugs, but it sounds exactly like a bed rug more than a, a rug for your bed. I don't know. Pretty much. Well, our, our saving grace might be that bed rug translates a lot better into Spanish because I know, Paige, you're not so hot on selling things, but it's already sounding like Mexico could be a huge market for our bed rugs. You know, we could have <laughs> the show logo on them and, you know, people would ask like hey what's this big logo and then they'd be like well it's this really great show you can watch it it's you know a reasonable time zone for us i mean i think there's like a huge market there maybe even right. better than here because i personally don't remember having many rugs in or around my bunk beds when i was growing up 
Well, did you have laminate or, or hardwood in your bedroom? No, I had carpet. So your whole room was a rug. I mean, I didn't, I don't remember using it like for the purposes of wiping my feet. I feel like that might have been a bit counterproductive in terms of the overall cleanliness, but I don't know. I might be wrong there. I almost feel like, and stop me if I'm wrong, but, but just like the carpet being under your feet is almost an act of wiping your foot, depending on how much you lift your feet when you walk, of course, but. I don't know how everybody feels about that comment. <laughs> Old teenage drag their feet from 13 to 20, probably 25. Right. Yeah. I think that's a pretty reasonable assumption. Yeah, and I've definitely stopped that. And I walk extremely normally now and uh, absolutely never have this issue. So I'm, uh, I'm glad to hear that's normal. I'm normal. We're normal here. <sighs> All right. Everybody so, in the world is normal. Well, that's also great to hear. Um, so, I feel like um, we said we want to use your time a little, a little productively, which is going to be comfortable and uh, or uncomfortable and scary for us. But we're gonna, we're going to give it a go here. Uh oh. So, so um, yeah, we'll we'll get to some questions about like your ward, your candidacy, stuff like that. But I think the real burning question on everyone's minds, I'm assuming, you know, the questions on my mind are the same as everyone else's because, you know, I'm normal. We're all normal. We've been over this. My question is, what exactly does a school board trustee do and which one should I be voting for? <laughs> That's a pretty good question. I think you're, you're putting me on the spot there. Um, for for my word, I think uh, there is there there is some words. Actually, are you gonna go Catholic or public? That that will be the first question, I guess. Uh, I mean, I am going to tell myself a little bit here and explain that I haven't quite gotten around to fully doing my research on everyone in my ward yet, and by everyone, I mean anyone. Um, because I've been doing extremely important stuff, like, uh, I don't know, making logo spin for this show. And, uh, but I, I'm kind of getting to that. Um, so like I'm a, I'm a public school kind of person. I feel like I just probably would abstain from voting on a Catholic trustee, if that answers your question. Yeah, of course. Um, it is funny because, uh, some wars are, maybe you need to do your research because there are some wars that only have one candidate that and at the end, you might not need to vote for them because they already win. So what, what you're saying is I, I could be running against these people and I might have a shot. Yes. Is, it, is it too late to get my candidacy in for, you know, like a, a school little, board trustee? Just a little, <laughs> just like a month, maybe. Hmm. When when does the registration open for the next election? Because I could I feel like I could really be starting my campaign right now. I think the next registration will be in four years. All right. Can uh, you can you remind time. can you remind me in like three and a half years? I will put it in my calendar. <laughs> yeah, just Very message the show that on Twitter. That's that's wonderful because one of us has to be right. Mm -hmm. I think we need so, to all be. Yeah. I'd like to hear, actually, Kelly, uh, just mm. for putting you on the spot, I'd love to hear what your um, your slogan would be, your quick and catchy slogan for running for the school. Oh, I've got like, I've got like five I'm kind of working with, you know, like we've got some really simple ones, like uh, you can trust me as your trustee, you know, that's pretty nice. Um, and... Uh, uh, something like I don't know. Drive me in like a trusty nail. I don't know. I've got to, I've got to figure out exactly how I'm going to make that pun work for me. But those those are two of the front runners. Um, or I, you know, this might be a bit wordy, but uh, like if I can get a bigger sign, maybe I can fit in like driven to find out what a trustee does. I think that's I think that could be really powerful that people will take the time to read that one. Right. Amazing. Yeah, see, it already looks great. Yeah, it looks great on uh, on screen, for sure. Gisela, do you have 
Do you I have trust you any to quick be my trustee? Oh, I like nice. that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I did promise two more. So oh. I mean, I'm done with listening. I was curious if Gisela has <laughs> yeah. has any um any quick and not dirty, quick and clean, I guess. <laughs> Slogans. For my campaign. Yeah, that you like to like to go to or or change up every now and then. L lately, we ha we have been doing word for change. X mark the spot. Word for change. Nice. Uh, and um, it was more to bring people out to the voting stations, uh, but uh, that that has been one. Uh, we have always also say that because uh, my uh, business cards are. Uh, compostable so they have seeds on them and to grow uh, clovers and uh, another thing has been said that we're seeds so no matter what you put us we always will regrow amazing i do I like, like yeah sorry go ahead Paige. i was just, i was just re yeah, reinforcing like i really like the the seed paper idea that's great yeah they are all pretty solid. I am a little bewildered, I have to say, that it doesn't sound like any of them involve like really clunky or obvious puns, which, as I understand, is kind of the main driving force in how a slogan should work. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I won't be looking into it. So, yeah, like, it, it, was that something that came up in the drafting process? Were you throwing a lot of puns around in the room, or was it always right to things that are, you know, like mature and coherent and smart. What for change uh, came from yesterday at seven in the morning. Uh, my partner called me on his way to work and he's, he's like, I have the greatest idea. He's like, why are you calling me this early? I'm normally sleepy <laughs> at this time. And he's like, oh, I just need to tell you this. This is our new slogan. And like, okay, let's go with that. Uh, so X mark the spot. Uh, for change. Yeah, that's so, great. He's the mastermind uh, behind my puns. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay, so getting just back to the trusty thing for a minute, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Like, do you do you kind of form secret alliances with the trustees in your ward, or is there just a bit of a like an unspoken agreement of who's kind of on whose level and who you want to? who you expect to be like sharing a lot of people's uh, votes with or what's kind of the thought process there? Or are they kind of below you and you pretend they don't exist, you know? Like the cops do with peace officers. Uh, yes, I think, um, I, I think uh, we're, as an immigrant, we're a little bit out of the niche and uh, the networks. Uh, some people have been like working together for so many years and they know each other for so many years. and in the communities and volunteering and the school board and the community leagues and all of that. And uh, we as an immigrant, sometimes we have a little bit more um, of the downside of that because our uh, social network is more reduced. So then we don't know mo more much about the person uh, from the beginning of times, just uh, for the late like last few years or now that there are candidates and the name is out there and you do a little bit research and you might know about them but you don't know them personally and especially with COVID I know I like I have met Giselle one time in person but other than that we sometimes talk or share tweets here and there or like each other's tweets a lot of the other candidates as well but I have never seen them in person but I know who they are, I know where they're running, but with COVID it's also more virtually that I have met so many people now, especially through the campaign. Okay, and uh, so is this your first election running? This is a serious question. Yes, it is. And what, what kind of like drove you to get into it? Pretty much a little bit of what you were saying uh, that uh, the candidate uh, that I was running in my ward was running by himself. So it was like, is this a little too late to challenge him? Just in, just, so, just to make this a democracy and give people an option uh, and not just win by default. Uh, so everything started with that uh, and then start digging and uh, what is going on in the ward. Um, I was a little bit upset about 
um, the park close to my place. Uh, the winter was a little bit rough this past winter and the roads were pretty ice, icy. Um, and then I, I, I always wrote an email and tried to be like just a active constituent. And I never got really good answers. Uh, and I didn't think that was fair. So everything was like a snowball, one thing after the other. And then in May, I was like, I think it's not too late yet to run. So here I am. Okay. So yeah, I, I mean, I'm almost genuinely surprised by that, that there really is still, there's only the two of you running right now. So, I mean, I, it seems like a great way to set the stage for you here now to, you know, talk a lot of trash about this man. I'm sure he's awful. Like, do you have any? I have never met him. Um, the, uh, the, as you may know, the forums were not um, very, like, they were not organized by the city. So it was more about the associations and groups inviting some candidates to do virtual uh, forums. So we, I think we were in one together, but it was never a conversation on a one-to-one -one basis. Mm -hmm. So I have not met him. Uh, I, I, I don't think nobody's a bad person and I will never trash anybody. Uh, I, I will just say we're just so opposites, like starting from male, female. <laughs> sure. I mean, like, I think that actually never having met someone could work in your favor here because, you know, that kind of frees us up to really, we can just make up rumors about him if you want. And uh, like, I, I, I admire your, your, your tact and your professionalism here saying that, you know, you're, you're not somebody who wants to trash talk anyone. And I, I, I totally admire that. But with that being said, you know, Paige and I can just start making up rumors about this man that if we've never met either. And you can just sit and nod sagely if that's, you know, more preferable to you and or then no, no one can claim shake you your head. It. yeah just shake your head at us and just no comments and no 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 this message is not approved by gisela candidate yeah? for war yeah it's like uh it's like good cop bad cop but instead it's um good counselor sorry is counselor the right sort of term or running for counselor is that right. wrong I guess. candidate good candidate bad live show comedy hosts right sort of dynamic trying to create polemic yeah. polarizing comments and and things like that I mean, we'll make I you think, look real good is what we're saying yeah and it really would it would fit really consistently with previous episodes <laughs> of this show which is always has a dynamic that. of good guest bad host it's just sort of our brand right mm -hmm, so yeah. I'll, I'll propose this as an activity i will give you three scurrilous rumors about your opponent, Tim Cartmel, and you just, you pick one that you think is the most untrue and you can defend his honor on that one. Okay, I okay. will try. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, or, you know, I mean, we can split them up. Paige, do you want to offer any of these scurrilous rumors? I will offer one, but I would love for you to go first, Kelly. All right, so I've heard from a really reliable source that Tim Cartmel is actually hoping to rezone three of the neighborhoods in his ward um, away from the kind of mixed use commercial residential that they are and into a unregulated nuclear waste dumping site. So that's that's something I think you could really run against because that seems unpopular. <laughs> right, but I've also heard from a reputable and only ever truthful source that Tim Cart Cardmel Carmel, uh, Cart Cartmel. Cartmel is notorious for pronouncing caramel like his last name. So he doesn't call them caramels or caramels. He calls them Cartmels. It's notorious for it. At every any chance, any time that uh, the candy comes up, he's, he's putting his own name on it. It's rude. Yeah, I I did hear that one as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've also heard that he um, is one of those people who's extremely angry about the renaming of the wards to Indigenous names. And he wanted the reward um, at the time, yeah, which he was the only one living in, to be renamed Ward Cartmel. Mm. 
So of those three- he likes to name things after himself. <laughs> yeah, we, we certainly don't have time and we wouldn't expect you to put in the work to deny all those things. But if you wanna take the time to deny one, I think that would make you look really good. Yeah. I think uh, I, I can tackle at least two. I think everybody has been against nuclear work since 1945. So I hope nobody's going back to that soon. Um, and, and, and Well, I think it would be the waste from nuclear power plants. So, you know, like nuclear has a lot of potential as like a clean, uh, like when handled correctly, like low carbon emission way of generating power for our power grid unless you're doing it the way uh, Tim wants to do it, which is basically to build a bunch allegedly. of orphanages. To build Tim a bunch allegedly of, wants to Tim allegedly it. wants to build a bunch <laughs> of uh, orphanages in uh, Ward Piesuin, or which, as he would like to have it, Tim uh, Ward Cartmel, and right. then simply have all the waste trucked in there and kind of just allowed to ooze across the ward until it hits the concrete walls at the edges of the ward. He's also going to build those, I've heard, allegedly. Oh, Wait. another one, three in one. <laughs> but uh, so if he cannot pronounce his last name, then wouldn't be Ward Caramel instead of Caramel? Right, is, well, if that's... he is against pronouncing the, the words, that's true. And that's a great question. And these are the questions we need to be asking in these elections is like, what exactly is your last name? How do you pronounce it? Without... I lost that game already. Right. <laughs> and, you know, and ex like exactly where are the boundaries of this wall going to be that keep the nuclear waste in? Like these are these are the things I haven't heard these kind of things discussed even once in this entire election. And I've been paying maybe 10 percent attention. Uh, hmm. That's a lot. <laughs> For a municipal election, it absolutely is. <laughs> It, that, that means we're improving. That means we're more entertaining than past elections and people is paying more attention. So 10% is al already a win. Absolutely. And I mean, we could speculate all day. I would probably credit the majority of that improvement to almost entirely to our previous episode on the election last week. Yes, the giraffe. Yeah, that's exactly it. She's pretty cool. And, and I think... Uh, I was just thinking before the the uh, the live. I was like, "Oh, now I'm envy uh, Giselle because she wear a pajama the whole evening." And I was like, "That feels so comfy right now." It's like, can can we all be in PJs for the event? Uh, I mean, we can always take an intermission, and I mean, you can go grab your pajamas. It's never too late. We have the technical difficulties button, which that that'll that'll take us through quite a while. I do feel a little shorter that I wasn't invited to wear pajamas from the start. I oh, watched last nice week's. Piece. Yeah, I saw that. I mean, not that I, I, I do regret to uh, say that I don't own a onesie at this time. Um, so that part would be impossible. However, pajamas, I do have. Sure. I mean, yeah, we could one up the onesies with pajamas. I mean, you could even take that nice uh, blue and or red background behind you, Paige, and just kind of turn it into like a toga. That could be that could be a theme. We could have a toga so, show. This this baby is covering um, covering all of the mess that resides in my room. So it is staying exactly where it is. <laughs> it's my real life background. It will stay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that does seem clever. I mean, then I, if I had a plan like that, I wouldn't have to frantically jam all my mess directly behind that couch over there so that it's not particularly visible on the stream. Mm -hmm. I can also just make myself entirely invisible by doing this. And really, nice. this way we get more Gisela, and I think that's great. It is. That is a Thank lovely you. painting in your background, Gisela, as well. Oh, thank you. Actually, that was made by a friend of mine. She's now living in Victoria. Lucky her. Oh, really? Amazing. Yeah. Oh, switch to me. That is some bad quality video on my end. <laughs> That's right. Donate mm -hmm. now to the show and we can upgrade our version of StreamYard to record in uh, full HD, which I assume that uh, Paige's camera is suited for. Oh, totally entirely suited. The webcam that is in my computer screen, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we did have a bit of an attempt at sincerity and we seem to have gotten off the track and uh, <laughs> I, our off-screen producer will probably cattle prod me if I don't do this soon. So uh, 
getting back to your uh, slogan here, Gisela, which I'm going to put on the screen, what kind of change are we voting for? Or do, are you have you gone with the extremely literal version of, I am not the incumbent, so I am by default a vote for change? A little bit of that. <laughs> uh, it's everything. Uh, first of all, um, we're we are immigrants. Uh, well, I am immigrant, and uh, I think it's very important now to have representation for uh, also the woman in in the city. Uh, right now, there is only two women sitting on council when the population of the city is not represented. Right, like it's not just a ten percent of the city that is woman. There is just one. Uh, person of color in city council. I don't think less than the one percent is uh, is people of color or immigrants. I I I don't think that the current city council is representing Edmonton. So I think that needs to change. So it's a lot of little changes. More women in city council. More people of color. Um, diversity. So then for that we need to vote for change. Uh, vote a little bit uh, outside of the box, but. Check mark the box. But in the box, yeah. Exactly. Outside the box, in the box. <laughs> so in a sense, your slogan could not kind of be condensed to just like vote out whitey. Am I am I reading that correctly? <laughs> no, there are good <laughs> candidates that it doesn't matter race. It just needs representation matters. I think uh, mm. it does, it's not just about color of skin. It's about uh, ideologies, backgrounds. It professions even professions yeah exactly Experience. So, yeah because yeah, i mean just Age, looking yeah. at uh looking at this uh website i have for the the heated race in your ward um it does say that tim Cartmel is a small business owner and professional engineer and i mean i think we can all agree those are two jobs that have been vastly underrepresented in politics i've i can't think of another business owner who's ever gone on to hold office so that could be groundbreaking i think mm -hmm. Again, I will not be researching this. Mm. I think you're spending too much of your 10% in in some of the uh, little uh, details. Um, <laughs> but I, I think it is more about a little bit of everything. Uh, we need engineers. We need even moms, right? Like uh, running uh, like moms that are now decided to run. Why not? Like. If they can run a household, they can do everything. If they can uh, manage to the laundry that is never ending <laughs> and their kids and groceries and all of that, and they still be cheerful and happy. I think that's already like already uh, a good background to be in city council. Uh, right now, I have to juggle my life as an adult, a full-time job, a full-time campaign, and just survived through COVID. So if we can do all of this, it's already a big, uh, good um, reference that, they can, that we can juggle whatever city council throws at us. Yeah, um, that's, uh, you know, I'm gonna be honest, I lost my turn of thought. So Paige, if you did wanna bail me out here, now would be a great time. <laughs> Bailing him out. I do agree, yeah. Um, uh, like the the sorry the mothers uh, running for for councils and positions and have like already taking uh, con like control of their household or sorry control is a maybe a harsh word for that but like you know having ownership command over ownership yeah yeah got ducks in a row in their household they got they can get ducks in a row anywhere else yeah it feels like. But uh, I do have uh, another sincere question for you is, um, I was wondering what, if you could choose um, one thing for all of Edmonton to agree on, um, what would that be? And feel free to take a little time to think about it. But if there was, you know, one thing, if it's like maybe something really small, like, um, And if you do need time to think about it, you can just, discreetly tap the side of your head and we will hit that technical <laughs> difficulty screen and that will buy you, I don't know, I think somewhere around like three minutes to come up with an answer. I think I, I think the biggest thing, uh, and not only Edmonton, I think worldwide will be like, why we need to choose sides? 
like sides of things like we we shouldn't be that divided i think i i one of the things that i sometimes always keep saying in twitter and my emails is like be kind to each other like let's just stop attacking if about race i think i, I will just and like racism and let's just see beyond color of the skin and languages or borders or anything like that and, and start attacking each other just because we believe different things i think we just need to be more accept uh to, towards others and other ideologies regardless what it is sometimes it is hard but we don't have to be mad or aggressive to the other person uh i think you get more with honey with with vinegar i think is the saying right more with honey is than with vinegar yeah yeah, that is true. That is the saying. It is a fun fact that you will actually, in real life, attract uh, more flies with vinegar than with honey. But I do agree with the spirit of what you're saying, which is that, you know, we are, like, maybe a lot of our division is in a way, like, it's kind of inauthentic in that, I mean, if, if you want my opinion on it, I think uh, the, you know, the, the steady social media diets that are, like, funneling us each are very different specific stream of information that is kind of tailored to make us angry because that drives more engagement has made us i would say kind of like artificially angry like we're being like pushed to the angry space every time an issue comes up and there's not really any kind of room for discussion or reconciliation in that like i don't know if you would agree with that Yes, like um, I think conversation is always welcome, and as long as it's respectful and in uh, understandable way of, un uh, yeah, understanding that the different people might have different point of view, but without attacking. I think when it becomes like personal and even in politics, is like I know pol the polemy or polemic subjects or controversial themes may draw more attention to you but do you really want to play that game uh, i i think people now with uh internet information is out there so if people want to find the dirty clothes under the rug or in the bed the monsters under the bed again uh -huh. yeah <laughs> you can find them uh but i think people is just tired of that and especially to kobe would need just so much peace of mind, peace in our hearts, and and be able to go go to sleep uh, with a with a no guilty, no, re no remorse, guilt. because mm -hmm. now we don't know if we will wake up the next day now that the health system is collapsed. So hopefully everything is healthy. Everybody, everybody. everybody. So like going to sleep with a clean conscience and clean yes. shoes, right? I think, I mean, I honestly, and I think clean that could- sheets. Yeah, I mean, like clean conscience, clean shoes, clean sheets. That that's my campaign slogan. That's my fourth example of a campaign slogan, and I'm taking that one. And none of you can take it. So you know, it's been said here. I will remember it uh, in three years and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's exactly it. I do want you to remind me to register in the election and remind me also what my slogans were because I will forget. But at the same time, don't steal them. Does that kind of like? Does that kind of work? It, it it kind of works because uh, you're you're running for a uh, trustee, so I will remember to trust you. Oh yeah, I did say I was running for trustee. That does feel like I'm kind of swinging low. Now that I've seen that, I mean, in this election, there's there's some wards of people running unopposed. I feel like, I mean, I I have a look at you know. Let's just take a random example, Tim Cartmel here, and. I mean, here's something I think we can agree on. Uh, I mean, to me, he kind of does look like a huge nerd. And I don't think there's any doubt that in terms of representation, huge nerds have been overrepresented in politics. And maybe that's something that needs to change. I would like to uh, take a quick second to say that I look like a huge nerd. And so I uh, resemble and resent that comment. That's what I want to say. And I will I will grovelingly apologize to you after the show, but not during it. Okay. 
I accept. I think if we all use glasses, we look like nerds. Nice. Which is exactly why I don't wear them and why I bump into a lot of stop signs. But you know what? At least I don't look silly, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Oh, you don't look silly at all bumping into stop signs. I agree. Mm hmm no, it, it just means like, you know, I am independent, I am ungovernable, I will not let the government signs to tell me what to do. You know, even but, when I hit them, I don't stop. I keep, I just kind of deflect to the side oh, and okay. keep walking yeah. and play it off like I meant to because I'm, I'm playing chicken with the sign, right? If I stop walking, then the sign wins. You know, if I right. change my path, the sign wins, the government wins, and everyone is sheep, and I've, again, lost my train of thought. Amazing. This is what I'm here for, is to derail you so I can entirely rerail somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And where would you like to rerail, Paige? <laughs> where? Um, you know, I'm not really to so sure. Uh, haven't got that far quite yet. Um, but to go back a little bit to the question that I asked about, like, the one thing for all of Edmonton to agree on, um, Gisela, your answer um, was, like, uh, involving race and, like, giving each other maybe the benefit of the doubt and like something for all of Edmonton to agree on maybe um, in a way would be for uh, them to understand that everyone's going through things and has different uh, experience and to remember that when, when opposing or um, when was it arguments flare up or opposing views happen uh yeah does that uh, sound like kind of what you wanted to hit on yes I, I i i went to a summer camp uh in los angeles when i was eight and then i went to an exchange to, uh, program with rotary when i was 16 to germany and one thing that i have said uh since then is that if every young kid will have the opportunity to experience another culture there will be no war because then you become more empathetic of where people come from, how they're raised, how's the culture, why they do what they do. And, and then you, you are a little bit more open, open on, Oh, they're different, but they don't mean bad or that's just how they is. And then you're, you become a little more understandable of the difference and not just scared of the difference. Right. Yeah, I do. I do kind of. Sorry, go ahead, Paige. Oh, um, I was just gonna say that's very insightful, and like you're definitely uh, Gisela, you're definitely no uh, stranger to culture so shock because it sounds like you know you've been many many places uh, among the the few that I can remember. Uh, well, you just said Germany and America, and then uh, France you were in, and then now you're in Canada, and there's maybe even more between. So that's. That's a lot of culture to experience in a life. Tell me about uh, the first time that I was uh, walking wide up and then suddenly like my, it was minus something, the winter temperatures <laughs> in Edmonton. <laughs> uh, and then my eyes started like kind of shutting and I, I like I, my eyesight started to be like smaller and smaller. And I was like, what's happening to me? <laughs> uh, and they're like, oh my God, don't worry your eyelashes are freezing together so don't try to open your eyes because they will break and you will not have eyelashes and i'm like what's this <laughs> happening to me uh it's it, it's normal it happens here all the time and it's like if if anybody thought that hell is all fire and is like flames everywhere they have never been in edmonton when it's minus 40. That's true. And I think people also underestimate the amount of just kind of like concrete and uh, empty parking lots in hell as well. We have that too. I mean, concrete does get quite hot in the summer, I feel like. So that could be part of of the, the hot, hot hell that people are, are thinking about. That is true. That isn't the main thing I find to be a bummer about endless expanses of concrete, but it is it is true that it does tend to uh, like absorb the temperature of the season pretty well. Mm. Um, so I, I do actually like I really agree with what uh, you're saying there, Grisella, about the, the potential of, you know, as you say, the 
the, just visiting someone else's country does, in my experience, a ton to kind of just humanize people. And I think most people I've met that that have like an affinity for visiting other places and experiencing other cultures do tend to be of that broadly, maybe a little more collaborative mindset. And yeah, optimistically, I think I would agree that if if we could kind of just give everyone that transformative experience of like, this is what it's like to just see someone else in their element and see that people are just people everywhere and they're having the exact same arguments and the exact same problems. Um, but there's a bit of a paradox to it too, in that like global travel has, you know, at least, you know, two years ago, it was never more accessible. It's, there's flights everywhere and it's cheap, but the, the kind of double-edged sword of that is that everyone's kind of cavalier use of planes from, in my opinion, is, you know, it's just another one of those contributing factors to the climate change. We're seeing this kind of breaking up, like, the the stability of that world and the you know the peacefulness that we do have in it and as we saw more recently it also enabled the very quick spread of a virus everywhere so it's kind of it's kind of an interesting thought experiment to me is like how, how else can you get to experience other people and their cultures without you know finding a way to get eight billion people to make a flight every two years so that they can all have this nice little traveler's experience. I don't know if that makes any sense. Well, I think uh, Canada is a little bit um, gift on that side, on that side, because maybe you don't have to go across the border to experience other cultures, your neighbors might be another culture. And if you're open to experience that to know them, you have it there, you don't have to travel across the border. Uh, and I agree that um, the traveling, the car industry or the plane industry, all the gas industry is collaborating to our climate uh, crisis. Uh, but at the same time, if we're more empathetic with what's happening on Brazil with uh, the uh, jungle on fire and the ocean in Mexico on fire and everything on fire and the <laughs> overflow uh, in Germany, we can empathize more because I, I have fun here like uh, we are lucky to have water everywhere there's lakes everywhere so then uh, like people brush their teeth with the tap open or they run their shower for like five minutes before jumping in and it's like what are you doing we're running out of water just thousand kilometers down the south south of the border there are cities in the in the u.s they already have limited water supplies but because we sometimes just see what's happening around us we forget to empathize with what's happening in other countries. So it is a double sword, I guess, but we do still need to be more open-minded of what's going on behind our backyard. Yeah, absolutely. That is a question I kind of, um, we don't have a ton of time, but I would like to get some of your input on is, uh, I, I would hope that you agree that really the the, the biggest issue that, faces us probably at any level of politics going forward is the climate crisis. It's kind of continually amazing to me how comparatively little airtime it gets to a lot of, you know, to every other issue essentially, um, when it's it's so vital to our ability to continue to have anything nice really. So I'm, I'm curious how that factors into your beliefs, your politics, your platform of what can we do at the local level as citizens? What do you want to do as a candidate looking at the just continued degradation of our ecosystems everywhere? Yeah, um, it, it will depend who you ask. Like if we ask other candidates in convince, they might say that people don't believe in climate crisis and climate change is not a thing. Uh, and uh, the Edmonton admission is not big enough to cause any damage or being impactful. Um, I totally disagree. Uh, I, I start, I always try to lead by example. And I think that's why I'm also in this adventure because it's like, well, I, at least I can open the door for other Latinas or Mexicans or Colombians or people of color or women or whoever decides to run, just try it, give it a try, open the doors that way. But um, climate change is very important to me. It's very close to my heart. Um, 
as I say, like it, there's cities in Mexico and in the U.S. that already have like limited water supply. They have water from seven in the morning to 10 in the morning and then figure it out. So that's why they collect the water for those hours so they can wash the dishes and shower and wash their hands and flush the toilet. Uh, and these are big cities, like Mexico City has this problem and is like one of the biggest cities in the world. So then I think every city can make uh, actions, take actions towards helping the war crisis. And again, it goes back again to empathize. Just because we're not directly seeing it doesn't mean that it's not happening. But actually, we are already seeing it, like the wildfires. We're beginning of October and we still have wildfires. Um, then uh, the draw season, like it was so dry this season and the agriculture in our country, like in, in Alberta and BC was so much, so affected. And at the same time, we had the wildfires. We There was no rain and all of that. It is part of the climate change already. So we need to action right now. Don't wait for hell to be rain on us to to take actions yeah I, I definitely think that i mean what i find kind of still disheartening is you you can see something as plain as day as just the completely like unprecedented july we had with the amount of smoke the amount of heat and to a certain amount of people they are happy to continue saying well this is just uh, a, a random phenomenon, or this is just the climate changing naturally, and and you know there, there's all there's always that deflection, and it's been interesting to see how I think for the past twenty years or so, a lot of really really common attitudes towards the climate have been, oh, like you can't produce the fu you can't predict the future, you can't be a, such a doomsayer about it, and well, we're going to find a way if it is a problem to figure it out. And then when you come to today, you can you can now say, I'm not predicting the future. I can point to you something happening in front of me right now. And they say, well, like, I still am just shocked at the lack of urgency people around me. They just kind of, oh, it's, it's smoky today. Or, you know, on some other occasions, they're, you know, in a, a winter day that's too warm, you know, they're not dying of heat stroke, but they're the, you know, you also have radio hosts going, wow, it sure is a nice week here in January. And you kind of wait for them to get to the next step. Like, isn't that concerning to you? I don't know. I don't know if that's, that's uh, too rambly to comment on, but. Yeah, like it's, it's small actions. Like uh, we were talking uh, before on parking lots uh, and, and even the streets, uh, there is um, an image in Google that if you search for it, there is like one street and the degrees without trees, without any um, ecosystem to it. And it's just concrete and cars. And then they take te the temperature of the street, of the cars and everything. And it's like 30, 40, 50 degrees, depending of the area of the cut of the world. Um, but then you have a, 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 a street that has trees on it. And, and then the temperature also lowest from the concrete is lowest from the cars because the trees shade give some shade, also the wind. Uh, the trees, uh, we have seen more um, water flow, uh, no, overflows. Uh, and it's because of the trees. The trees work as a um, sponge, I, I guess, that they absorb the water from the roots. Uh, they also stop the wind so that hurricanes don't go so bad into the country. Or in those, But if we're cutting all of the trees, all of the forest, then we're starting to see all of these catastrophes happening all around the world. And it's us that we're causing it. And it's, I think it's just little changes. Uh, for my campaign, we didn't print uh, lawn signs uh, and we didn't give brochures uh, or anything paper print. The only paper that we had was uh, the business cards. They are 100% compostable. They have scenes on them. Um, so then you can plant them, reuse them, uh, or anything like that. So we try to keep our footprint as small as small as we could, uh, and maybe it will affect us at us at, at the end because our name is not everywhere, is not in every corner. But we were trying something different, and if we don't try, we will still be doing the same things over and over. And that's the definition of madness: keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Yeah, just going back a step, did you say you made no lawn signs? 
I no really like that. Signs. So, I think that's super awesome. My follow-up question is, is it too late for me to move into your ward so that I can vote for you possibly twice? I have an empty room <laughs> if you want to be my room <laughs> for the next couple weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Let's make this happen because I, I've, I, like, I think my politics have maybe shifted over time. My kind of like, my values have evolved and all these things. But ever since I was like, probably as young as I can remember, I've hated lawn signs with a passion. And um, I'm wondering if you would even take it a step further in your um, campaign platform. Do you want to kind of just go out with me at night and just start setting fire to all the other lawn signs that are out there? Those will be ha uh, fire hazard. Right now we're in the middle of the wildfires, so I don't think that will be a good idea. Uh, but uh, it is interesting because uh, it is well known now that the millennial vote or people under 40 is the ones driving the vote and, and, and the ones that are more concerned about social issues like the climate change, racism, Islamophobia, all of those social issues that is affecting our society right now is the millennium people that is more involved. The only thing is that we're also disappointed in politics so we don't go out and, and, and vote. Uh, and that's very important because we are actually the ones that are actioning on it and, and believing in it. And for so long, we have been hating lawn signs, but that's how politics is run, how, that's how campaigns are run. So we, the, uh, the things keep doing the same, but then if we millennials start pushing for the change, it happens. Um, so we just need to get together and organize our voices and agree on something and go for it. Um, it, it has been seen uh, in many, many elections. And once the millennium vote is out there, they define the election. So I'm hoping to count on the millennium vote for this election. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And uh, I, I, I agree with what you're saying about the, like the generational difference because it's never been easier to get information about your candidates digitally. I mean, I can go look online to see any number of, websites breaking down all of the candidates in my award you know i can go look at your twitter page i can go on tim cartmel's facebook page i can really suss out just how sketchy this guy is and i you know like what, what are, yeah what are we still doing with these archaic approaches and uh yeah i mean i can only hope that uh, if you do win you'll uh you'll pass a maybe introduce a bill in city or a motion to city council to to ban lawn signs, I'll be happy to write it for you. I'll be happy to hand deliver it. I'll be happy to stand behind you during the press conference and nod a lot. Like anything you need, let's make this happen. I think that I I, I will totally be on board of like limited the printing and our footprint. And and if you think about it, it's crazy because there's wars that have ten candidates. So that means each candidate have a lawn sign. There's twenty thousand house like in my ward. There's twenty thousand houses. So that means there will be 20,000 lawn signs if every house gets one. And, and that, that's just one ward. And then different candidates, different. Then one for mayor, one for council, one for trustee, one for support the library, one for uh, support the teachers. So then it's like this all ends up in our garbage landfills. Like, it's crazy. Like, it, it, when I think about it, I try not to think too much about it because they actually upsets me that it's like we are causing so much garbage that is not going anywhere so i see this futuristic movie where the we start shooting the garbage to space because we don't have more space for it yeah but as uh the other dude i'm for blanking on his name but mr car cardmel would uh, uh allegedly like to do is maybe want to also burn all of that garbage he's making in the uh Nuclear uh, or plants. melt it in the nuclear, yeah, yeah, maybe melt it in the nuclear waste that he's making and, and boarding up with the orphans, allegedly. But anyway, um, Gisela, I would also like to maybe even suggest another, uh, and this is, of course, all up to you, your campaign, your, or your, uh, your choices. I have a, a little slogan here that I'd like to, to put up on and see what you like or see what, uh, see how you feel about it. Yay! <laughs> that will be my next my next <laughs> sign. So uh, for this week, we're doing uh, 
we're setting waving operation, I call them, at uh, intersection, main intersections in the world. So pretty much is uh, me and some friends, some supporters, just trying to stay warm <laughs> while we are outside, just waving at cars. Um, most of them way back or some of them, they hung their taxons and, and things like that. So then we have homemade signs and some of them say vote for change and some of them just say my name. So I think the next one will be uh, lawn uh, signs lacking platform packing. <laughs> nice.